boys, welcome to my Ergon guide. If you don't know who I am, I'm Erpog. I'm a Grandmaster Ergon in the US, and I'm gonna tell you how to play Ergon. So first of all, let's establish what Ergon does. Ergon's passive is Shotgun Knees. What Shotgun Knees do is they do a percent HP in a direction. So you have six legs, and each leg goes in a different direction. If you auto attack or combine it with your W, they will activate and they'll do a big chunk of your damage. Ergo's passive was where the majority of his damage comes from, so you always want to be playing around these directional indicators. Your Q is a small AoE which does damage and slows. Remember, at level 4, you're going to be wanting to put 2 points into your Q because it takes the damage from 25 to 70, and it's just good about trading in general. Your W is a machine gun, and it's your main way of applying your passive. Uh, your passive will activate on every single W tick. So if you turn on W and then spin around an enemy, every single one of your passives will go off on that enemy as long as you're directionally spinning. So make sure you're spinning around with your W. You can also toggle. I'm going to leave the map on screen right now. Over, boom, on screen right now. Uh, here is why we toggle. So basically, toggling is the most important thing to Ergots outside of buffering on your E, which I'll cover in a couple of seconds. But if you think about it like this, Ergot W does 50 damage. It does 50, 50, 50, 50, 200. What toggling does is replaces one of those W ticks with your normal auto attack, which is less punished, right? Because W, it nerfs every single attack you do because you shoot three times per second. So instead of using a nerfed auto attack, you use your normal auto attack, which doesn't have as much penalties. So instead of 50, 50, 50, 50, you'll do 50, 50, 50, 100, and then build that into six seconds. You've now done a free extra 300 damage. So, this is why we toggle. Toggle is very important. I'll cover it in a couple seconds. But just th let it be known, toggling is very, very important. Moving on to your E. Your E is your other most important ability. Keep in mind with Urgot's E is you can buffer majority of the abilities in lead. So, in the description, I will leave a matchup list and I'll also show on screen right now. I have went out of my way and documented every single interaction with every champion. With your E's, with your R's, how they interact ability-wise, there's a delay, and you, you know, can you buffer this etc etc so check out that interaction list in the uh description your ultimate ability is arguably one of the most fun abilities in league of legend ergon r is a missile that reaches out to the enemy and will execute them if they're below 25 percent hp but it also does damage this is one of ergon's most important abilities you can treat it scarcely because of its low cooldown and pretty much because ergon builds a lot of ability haste built into his items right black fever 20 ability haste etc etc so even if it is one of your most important abilities feel free to slam it so, now that you know what his abilities do, let's talk about how we use them. Uh, on screen right now, I'm going to show you how to play into all four types of champions. The first type of champion is a melee champion who plays like a ranged champion, aka Aatrox. Aatrox Q has more range than Urgos auto attacks, so we don't really have to play like a ranged champion into Aatrox. Because if Aatrox is hitting us, we're hitting him. If we're hitting him, he's hitting us, right? The first clip I'm going to show you is how you would play it if you were playing at a very new level and probably what your gameplay looks like if you're new to Ergot, right? You're not utilizing your buffering, you're walking in a straight line, you're getting hit by your Q, the Aatrox Qs, you're gonna lose, right? So I'm gonna play the second clip now of where I buffer. This is me using my E mechanic through Aatrox's abilities. This is called buffering. We grab him through the interaction and then we are able to kill him, right? And you can see my movement is more fluid. TLDR. Buffering means when you get hit by an ability that would otherwise stun you, you can ignore it by channeling this ability, ability to go through anyway. You still get stunned, don't get it twisted, the CC effect still goes off, this is not an unstoppable, but the animation still goes through. So if you get stunned by an Aatrox Q2, and then you press E, you're still stunned while Eing, but we're using the animation timer of our E to be... The stun duration, right? Because Urgot has to channel to use the ability. So instead of just using our E pointlessly and like ability downtime, because we can't cast while using our E, we use Aatrox stunning us as the way to approach him. We're gonna move on to Garen. Garen is a melee champion who actually plays like a melee champion. So this is when you want to play Urgot like a ranged champion. So uh, as counterpart to Aatrox, we don't want to walk into the Garen, which I'll show you on screen right now. This is us walking into the Garen. This is us if we're a new Urgot player. We aren't playing like we're a melee champion. We aren't playing like we're a ranged champion. We're playing like we're a melee champion, right? So the first thing you need to do is start walking away from the Garen because we don't need to fight Garen until he's on top of us. So we're going to use our superior range to disengage the fight with Garen until we have to react to it. 
So we E in response. We don't E as an engage. We don't engage onto melee champions who have to play like a melee. We engage onto melee champions who can play like range like a drop. Right? So second clip I'll show you now is how we are meant to play into Garen. He's going to Q at us. We're going to slow him after he uses movement speed boost. Because Garen Q cleanses and slows. Once he's running at us, we don't use our E immediately. We keep walking away from him. As soon as he's about to press his Q onto us, then we react with our stun because now we're melee. But as you can see from the clip, we've also got two auto attacks for free. The engagement becomes very phenomenally favored for us, right? Because obviously, Urkan versus Garen, what do you freeze matchups? But we also played the range versus melee matchup and use our champion's advantage. So moving on, let's talk about range champions real quick. I'm going to show you a game against Teemo as a new player, which will be on the screen right now as I'm talking. And then I'll show you how I would approach the situation personally. So first of all, you can see I'm walking in a straight line. I've auto-attacked him. I've used my E poorly. I haven't set up my abilities correctly. Teemo automatically just wins the trade because he's going to blind me, right? Second clip. Always approach ranged champions with your Q. Q needs to be the first ability you're using in and the last ability you're using out because then you can maybe get an extra trade as they're about to exit range, right? Q is a very important ability to be landing, so don't spam it unless you're landing it. Um, Urban is a very mana intensive champion in the landing phase, so if you miss Qs, you miss kill for sure. So make sure you're very accurate with Qs. You can't afford to be spamming Q and missing Q. Because if you spam Q and miss Q, you're going to oom and have a very bad time. So land those Qs. As you can see against Teemo, I instigate with an auto attack. I make him auto attack me. I see where his movement is going to go. I Q behind him because he's going to walk into it to try and dodge me. And then I start approaching him with my E. And then... When I'm blinded, I use my E duration because I can't obviously auto attack when I'm blinded. And then I just... And here, we're going to show you a... Uh... We're going to show you a range champion who plays like a melee champion. This is Jace. Jace is one of Urgot's harder matchups, depending on how skilled the enemy champion is. But Jace is a range champion who has the potential to play like a melee champion, right? So, first clip, I'm going to show you how you might approach a Jace if you're new to Urgot. You're going to auto attack him. You're going to auto attack him. You're going to E forwards in a, into a position you can't E forwards in. But here is how you're supposed to play into Jace. So here you go. We're going to show you. Uh, Jace auto attacks us. We auto attack him. We Q him. Then we E forward. So our E is more guaranteed. As soon as we get on top of him, he just dies. And that's how pretty much all ranged champions are. As long as you get their health down faster, that's all that matter matters. A dead enemy can't hurt you. There's four ways to play Urgot. Um, I'm going to show the, every single build path on screen right now. So, the first way to play Urgot is a Lethality-based full aggro playstyle. This is for people who have an ego. This is for the people who believe they should, they're should they not in the elo they should be in. If you are a confident player, if you are an aggressive player, Gomu's is for you. The second build path is Tank. If you like to be frontline, if you like to be in the heat of the action constantly, if you like to uh, tank for your, your allies and let them do the work for you, Jack Show is for you. The third build path is a more supportive playstyle, where you like to front line, but you also don't like to be doing damage. You want to play pure survivability. The so Radiant Virtue and Redemption is when you're behind in gold, but you also want to be useful in a team fighting scenario. So that's when you want to be using the third playstyle. And the fourth playstyle, which is definitely the best playstyle right now, is pretty much high elo Yomu's, is Stridebreaker. So Stridebreaker means have a fundamental understanding of Urgot, you can utilize the movement speed you get from the passive, uh, of the mythic passive, and you can also use the active in harmony with your champion's kit. The attack speed would enhance your toggle. What is toggle? So basically, I've told you the math before, what you want to do is you want to W, 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 auto attack. So I'm going to show a toggle on screen right now. It is one, two, three, toggle. One, two, three. Free toggle. That's the inherent rhythm you need to have inside of your like soul. All Urgot mains have a toggle rhythm inside their soul. It's like a heartbeat. Is one, two, three, toggle. Uh, that's the rhythm you need to get into your combat, right? But not only do you need to have a good toggle, you also need to be moving with a purpose, right? So it's going to be 50, 50, 50, 100, 50, 50, 50, 100, and you're going to keep rotating this while making sure to rotate with your legs. I'm going to show you some clips of me on the screen right now of me toggling on enemies, etc, etc. Just to send home my point that I'm always being proactive about my, where my legs are, if the enemies are respecting the direction I'm toggling in, uh, my, where my legs are going to be spawning, etc, etc. The toggling is very important. 
Uh, I'm gonna leave you all the information you could ever need to play Urgot right now, but keep in mind this information outdates quick. So on screen right now, you'll see the item tier list build. This is definitively what's best on the current patch for Urgot right now, but keep in mind this will change. Uh, Urgot has a lot of problems with items in general. Items already get nerfed, they get buffed, etc, etc. So the meta is constantly changing. Please keep up to date by watching my patch rundowns. I do a patch rundown whenever anything big happens item-wise, rune-wise, etc, etc. Speaking of runes, here's the rune page on screen right now, on to the right. Uh, use this rune page if you're confident at Urgot. It uses PCA, Triumph, Last Stand, Legend Tenacity, Secondary, Free Boots, and Cosmic Insight. If you're not, if you're into a harder matchup with Cosmic Insight, you want to run Biscuits instead, so you have a little bit more survivability. The second play style is for people who are newer to Urgot. You want to be running Second Wind, because it's a very reliable rune page. And Demolish if you're an aggressive player. So if you're an aggressive player and new to Urgot, go moves with the Demolish play style. Or if you're safer and you want to scale up, you can go Second Wind and Revitalize if you're doing the Redemption. Uh, outside of this, here's your matchups. All right, level 1. Let's speak about the level 1s with Urgot. These champions you can beat with level 1 on Urgot. They'll be on screen right now for you. A lot of these come down to skill. So Urgot has one of the best level 1s in the game, but some champions can exploit it if you miss an E, if you're not being proactive about your leg placements, if they have Conqueror, if they have Lethal Tempo. But rule of thumb, if they have Lethal Tempo, don't all in them, just take a small trade with your passive. If they have Conqueror, be careful, but you can still win. Like for an extra level 1, there's a champion that can win against you if he plays inside his minion wave. But to mitigate that, we play outside of the minion wave, we don't let him get into the minion wave. Darius is a champion at level 1 who runs concrete you can't win against because Darius is a bit broken early. So, moving on, I'm going to show you how to play the level 1. I'm going to play some a couple clips of me playing level 1 right now. And you can get the general idea of like how abusive Urgot's level 1 can become. So, the first three mi minions we do not care about. We do not care about the first three minions. Uh, the first three minions are sacrificed because we want to go and kill the enemy laner. We want to set up a kill threshold on Flash, which is our most important mechanic outside of our... Uh, Abilities in general. E flash is like where half of our kills in the lobby comes from. And which is why I like to run Cosmic Insight. Cosmic Insight gives us more flashes and more ignites. So if you're an aggressive player, Cosmic Insight is definitely what you want to be going for. And you want to combine that with E flash, right? So we're going to chunk our laner level one. We're going to play very aggressive. We're going to zone them from the minion wave. They're going to go down in EXP and then we're going to reset. If we are unable to find a kill from them, we always reset at level three. Level 3, because we want to get Cole. Cole has a really good effect where you, every single W tick, you heal 3. So if you count how many times a W ticks off on a minion wave, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, etc, etc. It's like having a permanent potion up. Urgot is a scaling champion who just has a very strong early game. So, extra gold, sustain, everything Urgot wants. Cole is very critical to Urgot's success as a champion right now. So always buy Cole. What we want to do with the minion wave to allow Cole is we want to zone them from the first three minions. We want to get the XP. We want to die them the XP. And once the minion waves are built up, we're going to crash the minion wave so we can get a cheater recall, which is what we're doing. So we build up a slow push. Once the minions have blocked up into the third wave, then we hard push. Once the minion wave is under on the third wave, then we can reset and buy Cole. Uh, if you stop by the stream to ask us some clarification about Cheetah Recall, I'll show you anytime, no problem. Basically, level 1, you want to be standing in, some, in front of the first bushes, you want to play very aggressive. Urgot has one of the best level 1s in the game. Level 2, this is when we start touching the minion wave, this is when we start last hitting. And then level 3 is when the third minion's minion wave has built up onto the minion wave that's been trapped in the middle. And then we hard push that minion wave, and then we reset and buy Cole. Level 4, 5, and 6 is a very precarious time for Urgot because the majority of champions will beat Urgot at this time period. Um, level 7, 8 are even weaker for Urgot, so these are the hardest parts of Urgot to pilot. But level 9 is when we really become unlocked. Uh, level 9 plus Black Beaver, there's not many champions in the game who can really contest you unless you've actively put yourself behind. But even then, if you're two levels down with Black Beaver Ignites and a good toggle, you can beat enemy champions who are two levels up. You are very deceptively strong from this point. So from here is, from level 9 onwards is where you want to decide what you want to do. Again, there's four ways to play Urgot, so there's four playstyles that come with it. 
If you're going Yomu's, you're playing to split push because Yomu's doesn't split. Uh, Yomu's doesn't group well because you're very squishy. You win inside lane with your movement speed. You go hole breaker to break open towers. Yomu's is split. Number two, Jack Show. This is uh, grouping only. You don't want to side lane with Jack Show, even if you can win on side lane. Jack Show and Radiant Virtue are both grouping up mythics. So if you go Jack Show or Radiant, you want the group up. Uh, Stride Breaker has the luxury of doing both. And this is why Stride Breaker is ultimately the best for Urgot. The movement speed it allows you to get on the map with without using your moves, which makes you squishy. It gives you durability, it gives you movement speed, it gives you dueling prowess, it gives you team fighting prowess, because it also makes you tankier. The Stride Breaker is the Jack of All Trades. Urgot is a Jack of All Trades champion. This is why Stride Breaker is the best, because it enhances on our Jack of All Trades personality, right? So, you want to split and carry from a side lane, get 10 CS per minute in the side lane, uh, yo moves. If you want to tank and group up with your teammates, Radiant Virtue. If you want to do everything, this implies you're, you're a very good Urgot player, then you go Stride Breaker. But first, play with training wheels on. You shouldn't go Stride Breaker first as Urgot. Because you need to play very good for Stride Breaker to be enabled. You need a good toggle, you need good macro decision, you need good team fighting. Stride Breaker does everything, so if you can't do everything, start with the training wheel, start Yomu's to learn how to split push, start Jack Show to learn how to group, and then once you've mastered these play styles, then you go into Stride Breaker. Um, I'm gonna leave on screen right now what champions counter you. Um, this is every single champion in the game, so I'll leave a link to this in Twitter in the description, because obviously it's a very big list. But every single champion on the screen you're seeing right now is coded between if they counter you or they don't counter you. So how do we team fight with Urgot? We've obviously talked about split pushing a lot. Now I've told you what to build and how you build them and like what their purpose is. But now how do we do that? Basically, if the enemy are posturing around Baron and you have a Yomu's, you want to walk bot lane because you have Yomu's and Hallbreaker. You want to start splitting open their base. If they don't answer you, they lose an inhibitor. Your, all your team has to do in that kind of situation is stall them out. And obviously, if you're on lower elo, presumably because you're watching video, your team might just turn it into a team fight. But again, you are going to get value on the other side of the map because they are doing this. So if you are if you don't have any favor with your teammates, that's when you go Yomu's, you see them do Baron, you go bot lane. You start taking inhibitors bot lane, you start threatening to end. They'll TP to you, your teammates or the enemy, they'll start recalling. So all you have to do with Yomu's is split. How do you team fight? So there's three ways for a team fight to play out. Ideally, this is the ideal situation. One, you have a team comp that Urgot can play in, and you're also good against the enemy team comp, right? So let's say you have a Rel, you have a Ziggs, you have like champions that have innate synergy with Urgot. Uh, this is when you want to play direct frontline, right? Urgot is not an engaged champion. Urgot is a second engaged champion. Urgot is really excelled once the fight has already started. But if you have a team comp that will support you and enable you, then you just frontline, you, you tank the damage. This is when you want to play up front and aggressive. The second comp is when you have a team comp that is favorable with you, but you're countered by the enemy team. This is when you play second engage, right? So let's presume you have a tank frontline, you have you and your teammates, blah, 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 blah. They get engaged on, then you re-engage. So ideally, when you're looking to engage in a team fight, you want to E-flash onto somebody important. If you get an E-Flash on the enemy ADC, and then, you know, you have Sterex, you have your Guardian Angel, you have uh, Gargoyles, you have a lot to, like, negate their damage. As long as you get onto one of their carries, or you're taking the entire focus on the enemy team, that's good. Uh, the third one is, how do you team fight when you're countered by the enemy team comp, and you have a bad team comp that enables you? You die. That is pretty much all we have to do. You just have to go Suicide Bomb into the enemy team comp, E flash someone, trade one for one, R fear. You have to pray that for like some celestial intervention or just go split, right? But if you've committed to the team fighting, if it into a team comp that you can't fight against, that's your problem. This is how you mitigate it. You just slap it, right? That should be all. If you have any more questions about Urgos, I'll be happy to help. I have a very active Discord community of Urgot mains where I'm personally active very myself. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Reddit. If you have any questions about Urgots, or anything I can do to help you, resources, how can I help you toggle, how can I help you uh, split push, macro decisions, blah, 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 blah. I am always happy to help you out. So, pop into the Discord. All links will be in the description. Everything will be in the description. If you want the screenshot for the item build, you want the screenshot for anything else, etc., etc., just look in the description, it'll be there. Oh, seven, Ergot mains, the aspiring Ergot players. I'm taking my salute back for the other Ergot players. 
Uh, I will see you later. Join the Discord and perhaps maybe buy a shirt. Because look, I'm wearing it right now. Sheesh! Purple merch. Wow! <laughs> Bye! <laughs>